What's up guys, this is Alvy T from Combat Culture and today we've got a really cool video for you guys today. We're basically gonna cover pieces of equipment that you can use when you're training either at home or out in the park, basically when you're outside of the gym. Okay, these are items that's gonna help you improve your hand-eye coordination, they're gonna help you with your conditioning, they're gonna help you reflexes, and also gonna help you with your speed. So stay tuned. All right guys, so the first group of items we're gonna talk about today are things that you can use to help yourselves out when it comes to speed, coordination, and reflexes. So probably one of the first pieces of equipment you're gonna pick up if you're starting to work out at home or outside the gym is gonna be a jump rope. Jump ropes are super affordable. You can find them almost anywhere. You can buy them online, buy them at Target, big box shop stores, super easy to find. It's a great piece of equipment to use when you're getting warmed up and also when you're cooling down. Using jump ropes can help improve your speed, your coordination, and your footwork. And one of the best things about jump ropes is that they're super portable. So whether you wanna work out at the park, at the beach, or if you're going on vacation, they're super easy to pack in your bag. The next thing I'm gonna recommend is gonna be the slip line. It's a really good tool to use to help with your head movement and also to help with your footwork. And the best thing about it is that it's super easy to set up. So all you need is really just some rope, or if you don't have rope, you can even use your hand wraps. And all you need to do is just find two points, approximately shoulder height, tie them up on both sides, and then you're good to go. So the one drawback with slip lines is that it's not ideal for Muay Thai just because we don't do a whole lot of dipping, and dipping does leave us open to things like knees and stuff, but if you're cross training with boxing as well, I think dipping time to time isn't the worst thing in the world. Just be careful not to do it too often and ensure that your partner or opponent doesn't catch on to your patterns. And if setting up a slip line, doing a lot of dips isn't your thing, there's something else you can use too. It's called the slip ball. Uh, again, it's something that's super easy to set up, right? All you really need is a piece of rope or a string and attach a ball or even a half-filled water bottle on the end. All you gotta do is just tie it up to something that's a little higher than where you're at and give it enough room so that they can swing back and forth. It's a great tool to use if you wanna practice some head movements such as slipping or leaning back without having to dip. And the next tool I'm gonna recommend is something that you've probably seen online before and it's called the reflex ball. Essentially what it is, it's a headband that you attach to your head, and then you've got an elastic string that's attached to a rubber ball. They're super easy to find, super affordable, and it's super portable so you can bring it with you when you're traveling, if you wanna do some hand-eye coordination work, or if you wanna do something for a quick warm-up, it's a great tool to have with you. And they're pretty tricky, it doesn't take a little bit of time to get used to. And I'll tell you what, you hit it hard enough, it's gonna pop you right back in the face. You'll learn fast. So next up is the Reflex Slash Spar Bar. Um, if you looked online at folks training, you've probably seen this before. So basically how it works is that it's a pipe that's attached to a base that's either attached to the wall or the floor. And you hit this pipe, the pipe swings around. When it swings around, you can either dip out of the way, slip out of the way, lean back, you can block and hit it again. And basically just hit it back and forth, back and forth. Then you can choose, either you can block, hit it, lean back, hit it, it's up to you. So it definitely encourages you to work on your defense and also your head movement. The only drawback is that it does take a little bit more of a commitment in terms of setting it up, whether you get the freestanding one, which can get pretty pricey, or you get one that you attach to wall, obviously, then you're gonna have to find place on the wall to set it up. But you can never go wrong with working on your defense and your head movement. So if you've got the space for it, it's something I'd recommend. All right guys, so the next piece of equipment we're gonna go over is the double end bag. You guys have probably seen many different videos uh, about folks using double end bags and for good reason. It's a really, really good tool that is low commitment, super easy to set up, super affordable, um, and pretty versatile for the most part. To set it up, all you really gotta do is anchor the top end to something up high and anchor the bottom end to something that's heavy, right? Basically enough tension so the ball is right around eye level. I like using it when I want to work on my head and eye coordination, just like most of the things I covered today. You can walk around the ball, right? It does take a little bit of practice to get the timing down, but once you get the timing down, you can start getting more creative. Instead of throwing straight punches, you can throw hooks, uppercuts, and you can change the way the double-ended bag responds to your punches by either tying it tighter or loosening it up. All in all, the double-ended bag ranks up pretty high whether I'm in or out of the gym. Now, the only drawback with the double-ended bag is that you are primarily gonna be using it for punches, right? Now, you can do some elbows as well, but it does take a little bit of timing. Unfortunately, you can really do knees on there. Doing kicks is a little trickier, not to say that it's not possible, you definitely can, um, but it's not ideal for kicks, in my opinion, at least. Um, and knees are pretty hard. I mean, you could try to do a flying knee, but there's much better tools that you can use to do both kicks and knees. So the next piece of equipment is 
is equipment that's pretty much synonymous with boxing gyms all around the country and that's gonna be the speed bag. Walk into any boxing gym in the country, you're probably gonna either see or you're gonna hear a speed bag. It's super loud and that is actually one of the drawbacks of the bag. They're super, super loud. However, it's probably one of the best tools when it comes to hand-eye coordination. So like the double-ended bag, it takes a little bit of time to really catch that timing down, but once you do, it's another great tool to work on your hand-eye coordination. So one of the drawbacks is that it is super loud, like I mentioned earlier, and if you're using it at home, unless you have super thick walls or neighbors that are super chill, you're probably gonna get some noise complaints because they're just like bum, 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 especially if you're hitting it fast. And another thing is that it is more involved with the setup. You need to get the baseboard that's on top along with the bag. The bag itself is pretty affordable, but getting the baseboard, you do need to find room to actually mount it up on a wall and make sure when you're mounting it up, it's a little higher then where your head is right you want the bag to be just about eye level here but if you do have space for it go for it the last piece of equipment we're going to cover in this list is going to be the cobra bag you can think of the cobra bag kind of a hybrid between a spar bar and also a double-ended bag it's a really good piece of equipment if you're trying to work on your hand eye coordination your speed head movement and defense a matter of fact i actually think it's a better piece of equipment if you're trying to work on your defense because the feedback is a lot faster as opposed to a double-ended bag but the only drawback is that they are pretty expensive so there is a bit of investment if you're looking to get yourself a cobra bag all right guys so moving on to the next list of items these are items that's going to help you with your conditioning and to start off i'm gonna recommend a good pair of running shoes. Running is probably one of the best supplements to the training. It's something that I think is necessary, especially if you're looking to compete. So you want to do some sprinting to work on your explosiveness, but also do some long distance running to help with your gas tank. And I think most importantly, it's going to help with your mental strength. You know, right when you're at the very end, you're tired, your gas tank is empty, you push yourself and you push yourself. That's how you get mental strength. So a good pair of running shoes is going to go a long way to keep your feet healthy while you're out there doing some road work. So the next piece of equipment is probably a piece of equipment you see predominantly in Muay Thai gyms and that's the heavy rope. Um, heavy ropes are essentially jump ropes that are a lot heavier. You know, they're really good for conditioning your shoulders and also for working on your endurance. Um, you cannot jump as fast. I mean, you can, but you know, you're gonna get tired really fast. You probably can't skip heavy ropes as easily as you would you know i would stick with jump ropes if you're trying to work on footwork and just speed heavy ropes like i said more for conditioning um the only drawback is that they're not as portable i mean you could still carry them around but because they're heavier and thicker you can't really fold them down as small as you would a normal pair of jump ropes but um the other drawback and it's really the big one is that they are murder on your toes especially around winter time all right so if you're gonna jump rope with heavy ropes be careful you've been warned okay I heard that or just be really good at it never smack your toes because once you smack your toes you'll know all right guys so the next piece of equipment is gonna be egg weights or you can use hen weights they typically weigh about a pound to two pounds right and basically just wrap your fist around them and use shadow box um, you know, they're really good for conditioning, working on your hand speed, right? Because of the resistance. And they're also cool to shadow box with as you're cooling down from a workout as well. The only drawback is that they're not super portable or at least they're not super practical to bring with you. I mean, it's only two to four pounds per pair, but that's an extra two to four pounds that you're carrying with you. But it's up to you, you know, I, again, they don't take up a whole lot of room if you don't mind carrying the extra weight. Um, you know, pretty cool set of tools that you could bring out if you wanna do some shadow boxing for a couple of rounds, you're gonna get good workout out of it. Now, moving on, we're gonna talk about resistance bands next. Um, these are super easy to find, uh, super affordable, and super, super versatile and portable. There's really no reasons why you should not train with resistance bands. They're good for conditioning. They can help you with your hand speed. All you do is loop your thumbs around both ends of the resistance band, put it over your back, and into shadow box. Whether you're working on straight punches, hooks, uppercuts, the added resistance is gonna go a long way to help you with your conditioning. And like I said, they're super versatile, so there's so many other exercises you can do with them. Another exercise is to tie it up to about approximately shoulder to hip height, right? And then grab one end and then practice your punches. You know, turn, it's gonna work on your core and also work on your punching strength as well. 
So the next piece of equipment is very similar to the egg weights. Uh, these are ankle weights. They're basically weights that you strap around your ankles. These are good for shadow boxing, especially if you're working on your blocks, knees and teeps. You can do kicks as well, but one reason why I don't like doing kicks as much is because they tend to slip around and they don't stay around the ankle because you know they're basically strapped to your ankle as opposed to the a weight which you're holding on to you know they are really good if you're working on like i said your teeps knees and also blocking but one of the main drawbacks is that because of the bulkier size they're not super portable um, and typically they weigh about two to three pounds each you know so it's not a whole lot of weight but you know if i were to choose between egg weights and the ankle weights i would probably choose the egg weights the next thing i'm going to recommend is going to be a yoga mat you know they're really good if you want to do some hit exercises um, to help supplement you know some of the other training that you're doing they're also good for when you're cooling down and you want to do some stretching i always recommend and stretching after workout when your body's warm and it's cooling down as opposed to stretching before workout unless you're doing dynamic stretching but if you're doing static stretching it's probably better to do it after your workout once your body's already warm and you're starting to cool down and a yoga mat would be perfect for that you know especially if you're working outdoors or if you're working out at home and you've got hardwood floors and for the most part they're pretty portable so if you're working out at the park you can bring one along with you and once you're done with your training you can roll it out to do some additional ab workouts or you can stretch roll it back up when you're done and then you're good to go the next piece of equipment is going to be the slam ball now this is another super versatile piece of equipment you can do exercises that focus on your core or just overall strength you can pretty much hit every single body part with a slam ball when choosing your first slam ball i'd say pick something around 10 pounds or so and go from there i think they go all the way up to like 50 pounds and probably higher than that but i think 10 pounds is a good starting point and as you build up your strength and you want more resistance you can go up from there and then the last piece of equipment on this list before we move on is going to be a pull-up bar pull-up bars are super affordable and they're super easy to set up really all you need is a doorway and then you're good to go there's so many different exercises you can do aside from pull-ups which is really good for your back and your biceps which is going to translate directly to how well you do with the clinch but you can also work on your grip strength just by hanging there matter of fact i hang on my pull-up bar for about a minute every day i try to go for a minute i don't always do a minute every day when i wake up what it does is that it helps me stretch and also i can work on my grip strength as well a really good ab exercise you can do is leg raises so as you're hanging on the pull-up bar lift your legs up slowly and then slowly let your legs go back down so do about three sets of ten and you're guaranteed to fill your abs burn the next day all right guys and this last list is basically a list of miscellaneous items so the first one i'm gonna recommend is your cell phone chances are you have one already and there's many different things you can use with your cell phone to help supplement your workouts you know a big one is the timer app right um, your most phones come pre-built with the timer or you can download boxing specific timer apps to help you keep track of the rounds it'll ring a bell at the end of the round it'll let you know when it's at the 30 second or if there's 10 seconds before the next round most of the apps are free highly recommend it another thing you can do with your phone is to play music right so if you're at home you could probably play it with the speaker or if you're out put on some headphones some airpods whatever you got music for me at least when i'm shadow boxing is a must right it helps me zone out and for the most part listening to music helps me shadow box with the beat i don't know if it does for you but it's really hard for me to shadow box without music so that's another thing they can use your phone for and another thing is to record yourself right phones nowadays the cameras on there they're just as good as camcorders for the most part right you'll be amazed at the quality that you can get from modern phones and one of the best things you could do for yourself is to film yourself as you're shadow boxing that way you can go back and look at your technique you can look for things that you could probably refine but at the same time you can look out for things that you're doing really well you know it's always a two-way street right i know we are our biggest critic and we're always looking for holes in our game to improve we shouldn't ignore things that we're doing well also and another thing you can use your phone for is to take notes whether it's jotting down combos you want to work on or perhaps writing down things that you realize sometimes when you're shadow boxing or you're training the light bulb just turns on something just makes sense so having your phone with you to take down notes so you don't forget what that was and to supplement that you can get yourself a nice little tripod too if you're going to be filming yourself as you work out tripods are pretty affordable for the most part you could probably get one for 20 bucks or so on amazon or if you want to get a little fancier you could probably get one of those joey gorilla pods right and get really creative with where you put your phone and they're pretty portable they don't take up a whole lot of room 
room so you could probably carry along with the rest of your gear. And the last thing I'm gonna suggest is an item that you can put in the center, whether that's a backpack or a bottle of water, whatever the case is. So when you shadow box, you have a target that you can actually visualize, right? So as you're shadow boxing, you can move to the left, move to the right, circle around it, move towards it, move away from it. Having that visual aid will help you a lot when you guys are shadow boxing. So there you have it guys, those are a list of items that I recommend when you wanna work out either at home or out at the park. Um, specifically, if you wanna focus on training your speed, reflexes, hand-eye coordination, and conditioning. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. It'll go a long way to help the channel. And also drop a comment below for things that you wanna see us make a video on in the future. Until then, keep training, stay healthy, and be safe.